Well, we still got a few people coming in. It's kind of one of those lazy sunset Sunday mornings. Uh, it's been an interesting week, hasn't it? Up in uh, Barton County, we had the great combine chase. And if you want to see the combine, it's just south of the it's south comes south on the Ellenwood at the light, just on the south side of the bridge, and they kind of pushed it off to the side. Where are you? Uh, south of Ellenwood. Oh, uh, just, just south of the uh, Art River Bridge. And uh, it looks a little worse for wear. One thing that did not make it in here and be under joys and concern, and there was just a small uh, notice in the paper so far, but it was the death of Janice Saylor. Who? Janice Saylor. I know I'm still a little nasally. Have you ever noticed when you can't use your nose, you're nasally? You're making any sense. <laughs> Uh, and also, uh, Nate will cover this, but uh, sympathies to the families of Judy Roberts Anderson and the one that we, we probably really zero in on is Hazel, uh, Hazel Jordan. You're lucky in a way, Nate, because, actually you're not, because Hazel would have kept you on your toes. Uh, Hazel quite the, was quite the character. and. Uh, we're sorry for their loss, but I know the last year or so have been very difficult for her. Before I forget, Alan Long is going to be at the Crop Walk today, so if you wish to make a contribution to the Crop Walk, just see Alan uh, and give him your money before you leave. Announcements. One thing. Uh, the food pantry, the Second Mile Food Bank is in need, and there is a, whoops, on the pink sheet, there is a list of things they need, uh, most especially, uh, from food to personal items, and at the bottom, we do not need green beans at this time. And on the other side of that is the Congregational Care Ministry Seminar. Anybody's interested? Uh, just to read, go ahead. I'd like to say something about that real quick. Uh, that is a special event, that Congregational Care uh, Ministry Seminar is a special uh, event that's taking place in, uh, in Great Bend and uh, at First uh, United Methodist in Great Bend. Um, and they are. Uh, Doing that to empower the laity to assist the pastor in administering to people who are shut-ins, hospital visits, you know, that kind of caregiving. So, uh, if you have an interest in that kind of ministry, uh, there is this event, and it's ninety-five dollars registration fee, and that's coming up real quick. So, if you have if the Lord lays that on your heart to, to engage in that kind of ministry, please look into that, um, that pink insert and it will tell you everything you need to know to sign up. Thank you. If you have a magnifying glass. <laughs> if you need full size, <laughs> we have it in the office. I mean, either my eyes just got a whole heck of a lot worse or that is about a six. Uh, there's a lot going on. It's a busy time of year. I think, uh, when is Stafford's October? No, I don't know. What are Stafford's Oktoberfest? Next weekend? Yes. Okay. Uh, next weekend, Stafford's having their Oktoberfest. Uh, a reminder that uh, depending on what happens or doesn't happen, Nate is scheduled to be here Wednesdays and Fridays from 8 until 3. And then he plans on trying to be available through five. And part of that are things like going out and visiting and, and doing some things. So along those lines, if there's somebody you think that, that it would be beneficial for Nate to go out and see, uh, let him, let Sandy know, and he can try to work that in as his schedule allows. <coughs> Today's the crop walk. Uh, Anybody that's going to be doing it knows it. 
where Sand Hill Hollow is. Uh, this Thursday, the office is closed. That's right, this is buffet day. Or was that last week? Oh, okay, you're gambling. But you're Methodist, so you won't enjoy it. And then uh, this coming Sunday is great for Antrim. They're having the 4-H Sunday there. And next uh, Sunday is World Communion Sunday. Looking ahead, okay, on the 10th, so this will be a little ways away, uh, is the Hazel Jordan Luncheon. I'm assuming that that's the UMW. And so I'm sure you're already in the process of getting help. And then there'll be a memorial for Hazel that afternoon. Uh, two weeks, well, two weeks from this Wednesday is uh, finance and church council, and that involves several things. We've, we've got some things to take care of with the parsonage and trying to get that albatross from the congregation so that we can move forward. Uh, that weekend, Nate's going to be at Kenwood Plus, and I'm sure you'd appreciate anybody coming that would show you a little support. Uh, wow. And really sneaking up in three weeks is the Bazaar. That's coming up quickly. And in big bold letters, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. You can't have cookies and stuff, right, unless they're sugar-free? That's correct. Okay, so if you want to appreciate him, find a sugar-free way to appreciate him. Anything in particular? No. You sure? Okay, cash. Okay, cash is work. Uh, do we have, uh, are to share a truck sand anybody here? Yep. Oh, okay. So we can sing happy, how old? Five and three. Wow. I remember when they were like, Four and four. Okay, let's. Do we have any anniversaries? Did we miss any birthdays? Okay, let's sing happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, are there any announcements that we have missed? We do have a special treat next week. I'm not up here for the whole month. It'll be Felicia. So, it always, I don't know, she's like less than half my age. Upsets me. Anyway, right before we start, oh, excuse me. Most of the fog is gone, but not... All of the fog is gone. Proverbs chapter 24, 17 and 18. Do not rejoice when your enemies fall, and do not let your heart be glad when they stumble. Or else the Lord will see it and be displeased, and turn away his anger from them. Do not fret because of evildoers, and do not envy the wicked, for the evil have no future. The lamp of the wicked will go out. If you would please turn in your bulletin and stand as you are comfortable in doing. Oh, I'm sorry. One quick thing. When we, I'm sorry. Uh, when we get to the end, the last hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, is 526, not 389. I do that a lot when you're just cutting and pasting and replacing. So it's what a friend is on page 526. And Mark, if you would help Joe, and Brent, if you take that side, and Mr. Schultz, if you take that side for the offer. Thank you. Now, if you'd all please stand if you're comfortable in doing and we will read the call of worship responsibly. If the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. Praise be to the Lord, who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. Now, if you would please remain standing, 
and turn to hymn number 61, Come Thou Almighty King, and uh, I'm not singing the melody this week.
Sherry White, who is Lynette's sister. I want to remember those especially, and then there are lists of those who are in our care homes, military, and other things. Any other uh, joys or concerns that we can share? And another member of Sister Catherine from the Catholic Church over there at Kenwood, and I, I, I think this whole Senate has brought about a lot of union of a lot of our denominations getting together, really, emphasizing the need of uh, our concern for our brothers and sisters. She ought to do that. Yeah, one of the things he brought forth was uh, a, a deep concern for the persecution of Christians worldwide, and uh, so that's another thing that we can we can be prayerful about as well. Any updates on those aforementioned? Yeah. Well, Mom came home Friday afternoon. Um, I would just ask for prayers that she. Be patient. She already thinks that she can do pretty much everything. Yes. Yeah. So she needs, she needs your prayers for patience. She's doing quite well. Crazy. Would you repeat what she said? Yeah, she said that, that Marlene has uh, come home, what day did she say? Friday. Friday. And uh, she's doing very well. She's doing so well that she's probably endangering herself to some degree. Yeah. So we want to we want to pray that she exercises restraint. Okay. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. <coughs> uh, Janet Rooms messaged me on Facebook and requested for her for Farrell News. She's doing great. But again, prayers for patience. These women who have always done so much all their lives just can't slow down. That's right. And that's good to hear, though. And she is in swing bed at Stafford. Stafford. Right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, for this time to worship you, and you have done so many great things in our lives. We want to uh, just give you praise for that. Lord, we, we praise you for our, our family and friends, for the way in which you have surrounded us with good people. We are truly blessed. We're blessed to live in this nation where we can worship in freedom. We thank you, Lord, for the rains that we have received this week. And in recent days, we pray, Lord, um, for those who are working in the fall harvest, try and bring that in. Uh, we pray that you would keep them safe. All those in our community engaged in that endeavor. We also pray 
for the outreach opportunities that we have, not just as a congregation, but also as individuals. And we ask, Lord, that, um, that you would give us uh, success in our, in our caring for the, the needs of, of those who are less fortunate than ourselves. We pray your blessing on our food pantry and the, the, the ministry of, of, the, uh, of the store downtown, uh, the, thrift, the thrift store. We ask the Lord to bless you on those people who, who give uh, selflessly in their time and, and resources in, in that endeavor as well. <coughs> Lord, we, uh, we want to bring these uh, health concerns to you, specifically uh, Belinda and Farrelline and Marlene, uh, Wagle and Marlene Warnke. We ask, Lord, that you would um, you would minister to them where they're at, and bring the healing to their bodies as they're, as is needed. Especially for Farrelline, we ask, Lord, that you would um, help her to see the the um, the sense in in just being patient and letting her body heal, as well as Mar Marlene. We just we just ask, Lord, that you would keep them safe as they can begin to to move more and more every day and uh, thank you Lord that it seems like we're getting some good reports there about their report their, re their recovery. Thank you Lord for the ministry of Sister Catherine uh, in, in the uh, ministerial association and uh, and all those that that work to bring the good news to our care home here and to Father, I ask, Lord, you would just minister to the families of Hazel and, and Janice and Isla as they have lost loved ones and, um, and grieve at this time. Lord, for those who are in the military, um, we pray that you would protect them, keep them safe. Lord, our hearts go out to all those who walk in the path of Jesus Christ, they pursue Him uh, throughout the world, they, they love Him, they worship Him just as we do, Lord, our hearts are broken when we hear of the terrible atrocities that they have to endure, let us not take these things for granted, the freedoms that we have. Help us to be prayer warriors in in uh, in their corner. We ask, Lord, too, that you would just fill them with a, uh, a profound, deep, and powerful faith that they can overcome the efforts of the evil one to to dissuade them from walking in truth. Lord, in all these things, we we especially ask your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. And now would you join me as we pray as our Lord and Savior taught us to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you would please remain seated and turn to number 382 in your hymnal, and we will be singing Have Thine Own Way, Lord.
they sent to me mentally, Darth Vader. Okay. Today's uh, reading is from the New Testament. Sorry, the New Testament. And you will find it on page 231. This is from James. This is chapter 5, verses 13 through 20, and it actually ends the book of James. Page 231. And it's called, or titled, The Prayers of Faith. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any monk among you, among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. The third line, the third line in that last hymn that we sang, the last two, Uh, actually, the two the last two lines uh, of the third stanza. Power, all power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord my rock and my redeemer. Amen. This should be interesting. Tuesday morning I went to open up my computer and switched it on and I was not able to get the cursor into the little box to type in my password. So it is now completely erased and I'm waiting on a disk to come back from the company. And uh, so I'm, I have handwritten notes. So if I have to struggle at understanding what I wrote, my chicken scratches, please give me the grace that I needed in that, that moment. A little bit of background on James to begin with. Uh, James, the one who wrote this particular letter, uh, was the brother of Jesus per tradition. That's what tradition holds. He was one who initially rejected Jesus, who didn't believe that his own brother could be the Son of God. He rejected Jesus' mission early. Um, but he eventually came to believe in Jesus Christ as the Christ. He was one of the many individuals that Jesus appeared to after his resurrection, which I'm sure was a catalytic, a catalytic event in James's uh, walk of faith in Jesus. And uh, he was also known, 
James was also known later on to be such a man of prayer. He spent so much time on his knees that he had calluses similar to that of a camel on his knees. When it comes to prayer, there may be no greater authority in all of Scripture besides James. It is no surprise then that he played a critical role in the church in Jerusalem next to Peter, the apostle. It was James that Jesus, or when Peter uh, escaped from prison, he, he told them to let James no. So he was one of the key people in Jerusalem running the church. So we have James chapter 5, verse 13, verses 13 to 20. This is how Christians do Christian worship within the Christian community. We have a snapshot in the first century worship, first century prayer life in the congregation, uh, first century uh, healing ministry in the first century congregation. And it takes on three different forms. The first is a, a healing type ministry. The secondly is a, a ministry of confession and repentance. And thirdly, a ministry of restoration. And that's how we can uh, continue through the message today, highlighting those three pieces of this ministry. In healing, we have a prayer offered in faith. In confession, we have confession offered in faith. In restoration, we have compassion offered in faith. First, the healing ministry. James provides the earliest known description of how Christians offer the ministry of healing within their community, specifically inside Jerusalem. James is the first who describes how congregations normally offer ministries of healing. More than that, Jesus or James is first to combine healing, confession of sin, and anointing with oil and prayer in the same context. In verses 14 and 15, we see that James is inviting all those who are ill, without reserve, to call on the elders. Now, that term elder is a different, different definition, they had a different definition than what we do today in the United Methodist Church as to what an elder is. But they were to call all the elders, all the, all the people who were of mature faith, to come in and pray for the sick. There's nothing to be embarrassed about being sick. People get sick. People need healing ministry. And so James emphasizes this key piece of Christian life. Notice that faith is the key component here. It's a common theme for James all through his, his letter. He says in verse 18 in chapter 2, I'll show you my faith by what I do. And then in, in verse 17 he says, Faith by itself, it is, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. And so... When it comes to doing healing ministry, there it is an activity that we do. James is teaching that when someone is sick, they exercise faith by asking the elders for help. That's the first act of faith. And then the elders, on the other hand, anoint and offer prayer, laying hands on the sick as a demonstration of their faith. So it's easy to tell someone who asks for prayer 
Sure, I'd be happy to pray for you. Let me know how it goes. I'll see you later. It's really easy to do that. To walk away and never have prayed for that person. And ten minutes later, you forgot that you even said that you would pray for them. It's important that when somebody expresses their need for prayer, that we stop in that moment, lay a hand on them, and pray for them. We need to become a congregation that acts in faith when it comes to our sickness, but also when it comes to our prayer for healing. Pray for one another. Anoint with oil when oil is available. Uh, we also need to understand that oil here is also an anointing. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sign or a type for the Holy Spirit. It's an invitation for the Holy Spirit to pour out on that person and bring His healing touch in that situation. We need to become a congregation that acts in faith. The overflow of your prayer may just result in the forgiveness of sins, James says. By the way, notice there that sin isn't necessarily linked to illness. James, no doubt, remembering the uh, event in John chapter 9, where people came up to, to, to Jesus and, and with a blind man and said, Who sinned, this man or his parents? Assuming that, that he's blind because of someone's sin close to him or if not his own. Sin is not necessarily linked to illness. James' words suggest that if they have sinned, they will also be forgiven. Another very important reason for us to pray for those who are sick. What does James say God will do in this case? Well, he says that wellness or healing in this setting is it's characterized by the sick person being raised up. <coughs> healing isn't necessarily the in the classic sense here. It's, it's a healing that is a, a raising up of a person who's down. Someone who's stuck in bed, can't get up, they're dizzy with fever. It's about getting them up on their feet so they can go back to work. If someone is worn out, laid up, sick in bed, they cannot effectively serve Christ or provide for their family until they're raised up. So that's the first implication of this kind of healing from the Greek. The second implication is that it is a sign that points us to the future resurrection of the dead. Once healed, the person is well enough to resume normal life. Secondly, we're looking at confession. This is an expectation of everyone in the Christian community. That we confess sins to each other, verse 16. That we pray for one another. If, especially for those of us who struggle at confession, this is an admonition to, to perhaps help one another with that confessional uh, task. Confess our sins to the Lord. It's an ongoing activity of our congregation. Why should we confess our sins? Our pride certainly doesn't want to allow it. So why should we take that uh, step and, and put a destructive uh, uh, hammer on our pride. James says, he carries on that healing thing, so that you may be healed. Here, the word heal, healed is more of a holistic 
understanding of, of healing. It is a spiritual healing. It is a saving, if you will, a justification, setting things right. To end all visible symptoms of sinfulness doesn't require the clergy to do that, uh, to achieve healing or forgiveness. James says that every plain old Christian, every lay person, is expected to do this, to confess and to lead others into confession, all the time, with and for one another. Plain old. James gives the illustration of Elijah, a prayer warrior from ancient times. He's as human as we are. He's not, uh, he's not a, a hero like Captain America, who's before, or Iron Man, or Batman, or Superman. He is an everyday average person like me, or Vic, or any of us. Elijah. His prayer was so powerful, it stopped the rain for three and a half years. And then when he prayed again, the rain came for three and a half years. If we confess and pray for each other, James is saying, God listens. Good things happen. It brings a, a reminder of that verse in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, confess, seek myself, my face, and, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Wesley's John and Charles, they got that. They understood this, the importance of the Christian community confessing to one another. They would get together in their small group, their classes, and, and, and then even in the more intimate groups, the smaller groups called bands, and they would, they would intentionally come together for one person, purpose and one pur purpose only, and that was to confess sins and pray for one another. Exactly what James is calling the church to do here. Confess and pray. Number three, restore. Restoration ministry. Verses 19 and 20. Notice that James, what James does not say here. James does not say, whenever the pastor gets someone who had quit going to church on Sunday to come back to church, dot, dot, dot. That's not what he said. What does he say? All of us, ordinary Christians, go out. All disciples go out. Sound familiar? That's what Jesus said. Go out. And bring the wanderer back. Not just to show up at church again. That's not the end goal. Or not to come from, you know, they might have bail, bailed out of some other church around town. It's not just to bring them to our church, because our church is better than theirs it was. James expects that ordinary Christians... When we see somebody who has wandered away, when we know of someone who has wandered away from the truth, it's normal, expected behavior of every Christian disciple to continuously, continuously be on alert for people who are wandering from the truth found in Jesus Christ. It's about restoration. This is not the same as getting people to come and show up at church again. 
It's about intervening in their life. Partnering with the Lord to turn their lives back around. It's not to point fingers. Understand this. James does not hesitate to use the label sinners with people who have wandered from the faith. Our United Methodist heritage, as Arminians, moves us to not take lightly the critical work of restoring lost souls. It saves souls from eternal death. Bring them back. Turn the sinner from the error of his way. Notice, it's not God's way that they're following. It's their own way. They've decided to make up their own gospel message. What's good for them? Does that sound familiar? That's what they're following. They're doing their own thing. James says, God, welcome them back. Invite them back. Walk with them back into God's way. Wandering from the path that follows Jesus can mean the death of soul. Notice how tender and yet comprehensive this ministry is in verse 20. First, we, we, we noticed right away, at least I did, as I was looking at this verse, there is atonement language. The word covering sins. The righteousness of Christ covers sins. In, in atonement language, we basically have three different types of atonement or, or, or justification where, where the Lord's work, Lord Jesus' work does, does something. First, covering so that it's, it, it's, it's that God, when, it, when Jesus covers our sin, it's God that sees Jesus. He doesn't see our sin. So it separates the sin from God. So we can have fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. Secondly, uh, there's this washing away of sin that atones for our sin. And thirdly, the actual removal of sin as far as the east is from the west. So far that there is an infinite distance between them. So there's atonement language in, in this. It's beautiful. Hiding sins. What is James getting at here? He says that, that when, we, when we bring someone back to the Lord, their sins remain hidden because the faith community focuses on the restoration, not on the type and numbers of sin that the wanderer has committed while they were away. When someone comes back, we're just so excited to see that they love the Lord again. Or maybe for the first time. That, that we aren't interested in the ugliness of what they did. While they were traveling that broad road that leads to destruction. The restorer maintains the responsibility also to not engage in gossip. Because otherwise, they would be on the road, the wide road that leads to destruction, wouldn't they? They wouldn't be much of a destroyer, or a, a restorer, would they? They would be a destroyer. So the restorer has a responsibility in that process. Equally important, the restorer's work is to keep all past sins that, that are confessed by the wanderer completely in the past, never disclosing them to anyone. That's an important confidence to keep. And then it becomes a tremendous opportunity for the entire faith community to offer praise and glory to the one who effected such a powerful transformation. We know that it's not us, it's not we who, who uh, commit the transformation. It's nothing that we do. The Restorer never works outside the wisdom, love, compassion, 
or compassion of the blessed Holy Spirit. The components, time and prayer and truth and patience are part of the work. There's no question that the testimony of the restored person is an invaluable uh, resource to the church in terms of its contribution to the ongoing vitality and life of the church. And in that light, I want to I encourage you to take this application seriously today. I want to encourage you to write out a draft, just a rough sketch, maybe an outline, how the Lord restored you to the faith. Spend that, spend just a few moments scribbling that out this week. And before next Sunday, I want to encourage you to share that story with a friend. Either inside or outside the church, doesn't matter. Maybe a Christian friend or a non-Christian friend. But as you're writing this, this little sketch, notice, think about how many different people God put in your way to help you a little bit, move a little bit closer in your return to the Lord. And then, take some time to give thanks and praise to the Lord for His glorious works in your life. Amen. Thank you, 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 thank If you would all please turn into your bulletin and we will recite together the offering prayer. O Lord, our Redeemer, you give new life through your word and spirit. We are grateful that you continually teach us the best way to live. Your wisdom is more precious than riches and sweeter than honey. Order our heart's desires according to your will. May these offerings uphold our church's ministries that help people to know and follow Christ, your Son. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward for the morning offering.
and to serve and love your world with all that we possess. Amen. If you would all please turn in your hymnal, remain standing to hymn number 526. What a friend we have in Jesus. Thank you. 